Hi guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight we've uh, got a pretty cool guest. This is my wife, uh, her name's Rosie, and she's going to be uh, helping me on this video. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I don't know if I've ever spoken about it, but Rosie doesn't get ASMR at all, can't stand any sort of sounds or noises while she sleeps. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit of an experiment. Um, Hopefully it's going to end up being like a bit of an unintentional ASMR video, which is some of my favourites, as you'd know. So Rosie, being an occupational therapist and a registered nurse, is going to tell us a little bit about... Well, what are you going to tell us about? Um, so today I'm going to do um, a bit of compression bandaging for you. So we're going to do compression bandaging uh, of your, your hand and sort of part of the way up your arm hopefully and see how much damage we've got. <laughs> so generally um, we use compression bandaging uh, to treat edema or swelling uh, and you can use it for chronic conditions such as lymphedema or we can use it for acute conditions we use it in the uh, management of, of burns and things like that. So you can um, generally you'll see compression bandaging in your upper limb and or your lower limb. So, yeah. Cool. So Rosie is an aged care nurse um, and has worked in hospitals in the past. Um, so she's got a little bit of experience with these sorts of things. So we're going to hand it over to her. So I'm going to be the hand model today. Um, so Rosie, how do you want us to start? Um, so the first thing that we do when we're doing any sort of um, compression therapy, uh, particularly with our compression bandaging, is we take measurements uh, of, of the limb or the area that you're going to bandage. And that's going to tell us if the therapy is, is being effective. So obviously if, if your measurements are going up and the area is getting more and more swollen, you're probably not compressing tight enough or you, you've got gaps in your bandaging. Um, and if the measurements are going down, then that's showing that the, that the therapy is working. And what we look for is we look for a plateau. So that will be a few days where the measurements don't change, where they pretty much stay the same. And that gives us an indication that the limb is going to be as skinny as it's going to be. Lovely. And then we look at uh, putting you in a compression garment, so a more of a permanent thing. Wow. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. So we'll start by taking some measurements. How do you want me to hold my hand? Um, if you just rest it, like that. Just like this? Uh, so when we measure, we basically measure across all the joints and that's going to give us um, a, the best indication of how swollen your limb is. So when you get really, really bad edema, in, particularly in your hand, you actually lose your knuckles and people can't bend their hands because there's too much fluid sitting around there. So yeah, his fingers just look like little sausages. So. so before we start, sorry guys, so I'm using my laptop camera um, this evening because I've left the battery to <laughs> my other camera at work. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit and see if we can bring this down a little. There we go. That's probably looking a bit better. And now you can see what we're doing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull apart. That's okay. And just make sure you keep your hand nice and relaxed. Okay. So we've got 6.5 there. So, because we're Australian, we always work in centimetres. Sometimes when you're ordering garments, they'll have, um, they often have centimetres and inches. So you always need to double check to make sure you've got the right one. Otherwise mm. you're going to end up with like a massive or a tiny garment. So five. Mm. So. You really need to be really accurate so this joint that we're measuring here is called the dip um, which means it's the distant uh, interpharyngeal joint and then we measure your pip which is the proximal interpharyngeal joint you can see that's six points
and then we just go ahead and measure all of those. This tape that I've got at home isn't the best. So we've got 5.2. Then we've got 6.3 again. Your knuckles are quite uniform. Oh, thank which you. It's nice to see. Generally, people have like big ones or little ones. I try. <laughs> okay, so that's 4.9. For those of you who don't know, that was a fake laugh coming from my wife. Then. She's pretty much <laughs> sick of all my jokes now. I've heard them all before, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then that's 5.8. 5.8. Are you going to be wrapping the bandage all around my fingers? Yes, I will be. So when you have edema in your hands, if you miss if you miss any section of skin, the the bandaging will prevent the, the fluid from travelling back up your heart and going back into your cardiovascular system. So if I just bandaged from here up, you'd just end up with like a massive... Thing on the oh, end of your scrub. <laughs> yeah, it can look quite weird if you get it if you get it wrong. So, just come around here. I didn't write that one down. Oh. Come over here. Four point six. So we've done your fingers, and so now just keep your hand just nice and relaxed. If you if your hand is too tense, then we're not going to get the correct measurement. You measure across your metacarpal joint. You can see I've got the inches there. I'll turn it around. I don't want that. <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> okay, and we've got 20.2. 20.2. Rosie often tells me stories about how she's actually quite a hard ass in, <laughs> when she's a nurse. So this is quite different for her. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I can't believe you say that. And then so when we measure the wrist, we measure from the um, little bony prominence on the ulna to the radius. Um, so then with that, we get the most accurate measurement. And the, re the reason why we measure across the joints is because um, they're easy to find so you can find those anatomical landmarks so if you measure across a joint you're always you're going to be measuring in the same section all the time mm -hmm. if I measure your wrist one day I could measure up here the next day I could measure a couple of centimeters up and I'm going to get yeah. a completely different reading so that's why we do that oh that's not a good so good. So 17.8. Okay, and then we'll come up and I'll just just pull your arm up there. And I'll this one does take a bit of I'm just gonna measure the fattest part of your forearm. And that is 27 on the dot. Okay. Now everyone knows how not muscly <laughs> I am. Well, your forearm is always muscly because it contains all the muscles that, um, with your fingers. Your fingers don't have any muscles in them, they're only tender ones. Okay, so we'll pop that away. Pop that up out of here. So this is just some cohesive bandaging. So you can get all sorts of different fancy bandages um, if you're doing this sort of stuff all the time, or particularly for legs that need a bit more compression. You can get bandages that have little pictures on them and then you know that you've got the right tension in the bandage because uh, it'll make a little picture. 
Yeah, it is. It's quite good. Okay, so we pull out some of it. Now, uh, there's a special trick to getting, you need to bandage the tips of your fingers. So if you're going to go around in a spiral, you'll miss the tip. So there's a special trick for getting those done. Usually you'd use a smaller bandage, but I've, I've only got this big one, so I'll just cut this one up. Okay. So the, old, the elderly people that I look after, their skin is quite... Just let me see your hand, because your fingers are quite long and I want to make sure I get... It's not going to be enough. Cool. Um, so the elderly people that I look after, their skin is really, really frail. So you wouldn't... We wouldn't really be doing this kind of um, bandaging on them. Because it, it's it's quite a uh, can be quite taxing on your skin. Mm. So just cut that nice and neatly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you no, it's okay. We'll put it down. So what we do is this bandage will stick to itself. So we'll put a little anchor. Oh, I'm not happy with that. We'll make a fatter one. Sure that's stuck down nicely. I feel like all of the old people that you look after would fall asleep while this was happening. <laughs> Do you think old people fall asleep? Sometimes if people have trouble sleeping uh, or they don't want to be alone in their room, so what we do is we put them in a special chair called a Regency chair, which is like half chair, half bed. So what we do is we stick that little fellow on there. Now you have to keep your hands fairly still and pull that over. And then you can see the top of the the top of the fingers covered. So mm. that's gonna be covered. And we do our bandaging. Just do each other. So what I was saying, what we do for people if they're having trouble sleeping. Oh my god, stop this up. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, we pop them in a special chair that's like a half chair, half bed, and then we take them out to the nurse's station because we're wor working all night and then they um, they'll listen to us chatter and do our work and then generally we find they sleep quite well hmm. cool. I, be about my ASMR channel. I was talking to someone about your ASMR <laughs> channel because we've just set up a, our own YouTube channel where we can make make playlists for the residents. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, so, um, and then we can broadcast them to their TVs. Mm. Mm. I should go. You should pull your... I don't think that one's me. quite long enough. <laughs> Come on, mate. There you go. So you can see this is easier. If you can already have if the you've got the little, <laughs> you've got the little bandage <laughs> already, but I was, I was too cheap. That's okay. I this you from probably the chemist. Oh, should you get this from the chemist? Yeah, I didn't have any on hand. Are you gonna nick some from work? Well, we don't really use it, um, because. 
more of an acute care thing, more of something that you do in hospital or something that you do as part of a lymphedema, like a specialty clinic. And it's too, um, it's too hard for the resident's skin, so. Yeah, true. Boop. Okay. So, I probably should do this right, so turn your hand over. Now, your hand always wants to go uh, into something called flexion, which is when you have your fingers curled in tight. Mm. So when I'm pulling it, instead of going from the back to the front, you really should go from the front to the back. So it pulls that finger out mm. from it, which is um, much better for drainage of fluid. If you bandage someone like this, they're not gonna, that fluid's not gonna travel up the finger. I see. So, can you chop that? Try to be careful not to cut you. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. So, okay, and then just pop your hand over into... Surprised how strong this stuff is. It doesn't seem to actually be... I thought it would have snapped off. No, it's very, very strong. Okay. Thank you, darling. It feels much better. Okay, pop this one around the thumb because the thumb's a little bit different, and we want him to stay nice and mobile so that you can use your hand th functionally. If you don't want to put a band around a wrist, you can put a band around each of the fingers, but it's a bit more mucking around. I see. So you just go over the thumb like this. A bit of tension on it so you get a bit of compression. And there we go. So usually you'd use a small, a smaller bandage going around the fingers. That's cool. Should I be keeping my hand? Yeah, try and keep your hand flat, or should I let it? Um, try not to let it curl up because okay. that's going to affect um, the tension of the bandaging. So you don't, I don't want to bandage you like this because then it won't drain. So yeah. when I bandage you, I'll pull your fingers out nice and straight into. Um, Will this next part be spirally? Yes. Yeah. So. Um, you generally you can just do a um thanks. It's okay. It makes it a lot easier. It's alright. Oh, fingers. Okay. So So start with this. And start with this one. So we're just going to pull it, we don't want to pull it too tight, not too loose, about 50% and then we'll do try and do about a 50% of a overlap. Sorry guys, it's a bit awkward trying to get it on camera for you, <laughs> but that's, it looks pretty good, hopefully you'll be able to see what Rosie's doing. It's not very neat because I don't have the bandage rolled up. That's nicely. Right. as long as we can sort of see. What so I was saying before, if you have any gaps in this kind of bandaging, okay, and then we just chop that, stick that down. If you have any gaps, um, that's right. It's a bit hard trying to get it on <laughs> camera, guys, but um, she's done a good job there. <laughs> I've got a little bit here, so I'll do you. Pinky next. Just pop if you pop your hand down like that, you'll be able to see a bit better. There you go. Chop that. 
so it has that tension feeling for you. It should feel, feel snug. Yeah, it should feel firm. But not tight. Yeah, but not tight. So uh, if you get any pain or um, if you get any funny sensations, any funny feeling, any tingling, any numbness. Oh, mate, just, uh, the, just the ASMR tingles, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to go to sleep during these? Oh, I'm getting tired. <laughs> That might just be because young girls sort of make you that way. Where are you at? I'm going to have to do this for you all the time now. Yeah. Okay. That's a much neater one. There we go. It's been a long time since I've actually done this kind of bandaging. I learned how to do it as a student um, when I was working in Burns. Not true. So I haven't, haven't really had much call for it. It's a really like, it's quite a specialty. Okay. I get and that was your, one of your favourite places to work, wasn't it? Yeah, Burns? it was brilliant. It was very interesting. I got to go to um, some Burns surgery with the Burns surgeons. Who love to show off. <laughs> okay, so I bring that around. But yeah, it was an incredible place to work. Okay. I want to take this off. It feels nice and comfy. <laughs> you want to take it off um, if you have to wear it like all the time. True. <laughs> People get playing quiet. video games with it on so, either. Because your thumb. I come around your thumb. And around the back of your hand. Tricky, did you guys see that? That was so really it's good. It's a bit of a tricky little. It's a bit of a. Oh, it's rolled a bit there, but it's okay. Try and do a bit of a figure eight around the, around the joints, and often your palm is what is going to get really swollen. So you want to have good coverage of your of your palm, and then this joint of your thumb is so mobile. Um, you need to make sure that you get that one really good. So. So we'll come down. And just do a couple, just spiral bandaging. And then when we get to your wrist, we're going to do a figure eight. So we'll come down and up. So that is going to stay nice and mobile around the joint, and it'll compress the joint really tightly. So Pull it out and then we just do make sure we get it nice and firm. That feels oddly satisfying. I don't know why. Just for some reason. It's snuggy. <laughs> it is actually so satisfying. Um, with people with quite bad edema and you, when you see the the chain, the difference that it makes to the limb. Mm. If you do a really nice job, I mean, like you can take a, quite a few centimeters of, of measurements. So that do just good. <laughs> so we'll just come to here. Yeah, so much anyway. so uh, if you had swelling in your hand, we would do it right up to your elbow or well probably really you'd go right up to the shoulder because um, you want to push all that fluid up to your major veins so it goes back into your cardiovascular system and it's not sitting around in your tissues so we'll just chop Obsessed with dates, so we'll put the date 28, 10, 20. 
end. There's, we're not finished yet. I'm so we've got these little gaps in the middle of your fingers. Yes, for you observant things. Oh, so yeah, I'm that out. For any of one who's wondering, I've still got a lot of movement in the end. Movement. Um, so what we do is we just get a little bit like that. in the middle like that. Um, you're not really going to be able to bandage through there so we just stick it down like that and then generally that's enough to stop the edema from coming through there. Um, so we'll have a look and we'll do a few exercises and make sure that you've got good movement. One of the things that's going to increase your in your edema in your swelling is if it, if you're not using your hand, because when you use your hands, your muscles pump all that fluid back up your arm, mm. back into your heart. Um, so if we're just going to sit around and not use it, then that so just do you sits know around. What, um, do you know some exercises that I should be doing? Um, yes, I can show you a couple of exercises so yeah there's a couple yeah. of little gaps I don't have edema folks <laughs> by the way if anyone is wondering there's a couple of little gaps there and there's one little gap there that I'll just cover up and then I'm just going to check um, there's a few tiny little ones That's there but that wouldn't really matter too much um, so So I'll just uh, test your opposition, which is the movement of touching your thumb to each of your fingers. Like that. Yep, so just touch your thumb to each of your fingers, and then you just touch that bit on your palm again. Yep, that's good. So we would say you have one, two, three, four, five points of opposition, and that basically means that you can use your thumb functionally to pick up things and to manipulate things in your hand mm. so you can imagine if you could only touch the first through two you're not really gonna you might struggle to pick up a cup of a round thing because you can have difficulty bringing those two mm. in um, so just bend your fingers up so extension so that's nice turn your hand over make a fist can you put your thumb inside Bend your wrist up. Good. And forward. Okay, so you've got quite a good movement. You've got full range of movement. So when we do this kind of bandaging, we'll put you up. We might put you up on a pillow, pillow or encourage you to keep your hand elevated like that. Or your wrist elevated like that. Sometimes we even put a little splint there. Because mm. um, that helps everything drain from your fingers back through your arms. If you leave your hand down like that, you see it sort of, it gets stuck here and it'll stay in your hand. Okay, mm. so when you do your exercises, uh, we might give you, I might give you a stress, stress ball or some oh, yeah. aero putty. Sometimes the putty can get a bit stuck in the bandaging. Um, so it's important not to go like that. When you squeeze something, if you're doing squeezing exercises, you've got to squeeze it and hold it. Oh. And then that gives it time, the, the fluid time to move up your arm. If you just pump, 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 it'll encourage more fluid and more blood to come down. That's good to know. Yeah. So, uh, that is how uh, you do your compression. Quite yeah. sticky, isn't it? So if you yeah, it can is. Feel <laughs> it's sort of sticking together. <laughs> so, this is. Me to pick things up. <laughs> if you can, you can pick up case bandaging. Okay guys, so that is a, I was going to say quick, but it was about half an hour, a little tutorial on how to do a compression bandage. So thank you very much darling for um, jumping on. I know you don't like ASMR and it pisses you off, but thank you very much for joining us and having some fun. And I think okay. you did quite well. If you guys have any questions about this sort of thing, or if you would like to correct my wife, please do <laughs> not. It's not worth it to me. No, but if you do have any questions or anything like that, you can put it in the comments. 
and um, and I'll give them to her and she can answer those.